Do I have controversial money opinions? You know I do. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a good day. Today I'm gonna to talk about some controversial financial opinions that I have. I say controversial in air quotes because some of these I don't think should be controversial. When did having a difference of opinion become something that divided us so deeply? We have lost the ability to listen and understand, to imagine people complexly, to hear the other side. We've lost the ability to hold a conversation. And this is a conversation. So if you agree with me or disagree with me and you can be nice about it, join the conversation. But first, if you're new around here, hello, my name is Lydia Sin and I make videos on frugal and simple living. I like to give you tips on how to save money and how to save time. So if you're into that, I would love for you to subscribe and join our community. So one of my most controversial opinions that I talk about frequently is, oh my gosh, I'm preparing myself for the onslaught of comments. Renting is not throwing away money. Having a stable and safe place to live is never a waste of money. Getting into a mortgage that you can't afford is. And I say this as someone who owns a home. I have a mortgage. We have lived in this house for nine years. I am not anti-home buying. But I don't think that we need to view home buying necessarily as an investment or something that is right for everyone. And in the United States, we have a housing affordability crisis. So Redfin, which is a real estate company, did a study, and I will link it below, and found that only about 15% of homes on the market are affordable to the average U.S. family. I feel like I bought at the precise right time, but my family and I couldn't afford to upgrade to a larger home if we wanted to. Our house is 1,500 square feet. There are six of us in it. I think that's fine, but as my, as my kids get to be older, I know we're gonna have teenagers soon, I know that we may likely outgrow this house, but having, finding a financially responsible home is not something that's gonna happen for us for a while. Um, we can build on, but even getting a building loan is expensive. So we're gonna be cozy for a while and content with what we have. But there are many reasons to buy a home. Stability, uh, wanting to put down roots, wanting to be a part of your community, just because you want to. <laughs> These are all good reasons, but never reasons that you should be pressured into. Your home really isn't a liquid asset, and you have to consider those hidden costs, taxes, insurance, repairs, repairs, HOA fees. I emphasize repairs because since we bought our house, like really within the first two years of buying our house, we had put in a new roof, replaced almost all of our major appliances, and had our home almost completely replumbed and put in a new HVAC unit. It was expensive. We were able to cash flow all of those things in 2016. Don't know that we could do that now with the rising cost of everything. I know that we hear from older generations that say, your house is an investment. But is it? But is it really? Am I investing in my family? Yes. But as far as a financial investment, I think that we need to consider those hidden costs. We subtract them when we sell our home from our profits. And also, if you sell your home, even if you make a profit, where are you going? Are you buying another home that's also being sold at a higher price? It's just there's a lot to consider when it comes to buying a home. And I do not like the idea that we are telling renters that renting is throwing away their money. Credit cards are evil. Okay, so I think I've actually said this before. Normalize changing your opinion when you learn more. But this is kind of a yes and or yes but response, yes, credit cards can get you in a whole heap of trouble. Ask me how I know, but they are a great way to build your credit score. And despite what some financial gurus will tell you, you do need a credit score in 2024. A credit score is just a way to tell people that, hey, I'm financially responsible 
and it doesn't just affect your ability to get a home loan or a car loan or a student loan. It also impacts renting a car, renting an apartment, getting auto or homeowner's insurance. It can affect some jobs, particularly those in security or with fiduciary responsibilities, setting up utilities, getting a cell phone plan. There are lots of reasons that you need a credit score outside of buying a home or getting another credit card. If you're putting basic necessities on a card and paying it off every month, then yes, great. But if you're putting things on it thoughtlessly or there's the disconnect because you're not seeing it come out of your checking account every month, it can, it can become overwhelming. It can be hard to keep up with. And then you have your regular expenses plus your credit card debt that you're having to pay every month. And yes, there are perks like travel rewards and points, but you have to really know yourself before you start using a credit card before you get yourself into a situation that you can't quickly and easily get out of. Credit card companies are not our friends and they are a business and they make their money off of fees and interest. And minimum payments are designed to keep you paying as long as possible. So know these things, go in with the eyes open. Number three, envelopes, cash envelopes. Um. <laughs> If you're a cash envelope person and you have one of those wallets and you're stuffing them every every week, I think that's great. I think that your brain works differently than mine and I need some tips on how you keep up with things. <laughs> I have talked about this before that I don't use cash for a number of reasons. Number one, I lose it. Number two, there is a disconnect to me between cash and money. Let me explain that to you. Listen, this isn't going to make sense to a lot of you, but it will make sense to some of you. If I have cash and I buy something, that something was free. If it's coming out of my checking account, I paid for it. But if I have cash, I didn't. That's how I view it. And so therefore, I don't have this attachment that you're supposed to have to cash. If I pay with my debit card, I do because I know, oh, I only have X amount of dollars in there. I really have to budget how I spend it. But cash money. <laughs> so cash envelopes have never been something that have worked for me. Also, I don't do sinking funds. And I did a whole video that I will link to on why I don't do sinking funds. I cannot keep up with 100 things. I cannot keep up with buckets, multiple bank accounts. I can't do it. And so I just have one savings account and I put money in it. And when I need to use it, I take money out of it. And then I replace the money that was in it. And that, that's it. <laughs> There's, I'm not overthinking it. I'm not having some spreadsheet where I track everything. I have a savings account. I use it. I replace it. Sorry, that's not sexy. Debt equals a moral failing. No. No, forgive yourself for what you needed to do to survive. Money can have a moral component to it, but it is not inherently moral. Going into debt because you didn't know better, going into debt because there was an emergency, these are not moral issues. We're all kind of out here doing the best we can with what we have and with the information that we have. And I actually had this conversation with someone two weeks ago. So in 2021, I read The Psychology of Money, and if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. But in it, the author talks about how a lot of these things like a 401k and a Roth IRA are fairly newer concepts that maybe our parents didn't know about. And so we're just out here on these internet streets trying to figure things out for ourselves, and we're going to make a lot of mistakes. And self-education is very, very important but not everyone is at the same level. And so if you are having trouble understanding certain financial concepts, you're not broken and you're not a moral failure. My six-year-old is in gymnastics and he has learned to do a backbend and a cartwheel recently. And the amount of practice he put into it, the first time he did a cartwheel, it wasn't great, but he kept trying. He didn't just lay down on the ground and cry and call himself a failure because he didn't do it right the first time. And that is how we need to approach money. And I know like the stakes are higher when we're adults paying bills and when we have children to take care of, but we still have to let go of the shame and guilt when we make mistakes. 
auto loans are low key ruining the way that we look at money. Okay, so a few years ago, I saw a TikTok and I've tried to find it. I can't. However, the, the, the woman in the video was talking about how she is a mortgage broker and people come to her and say, I want my payment on my mortgage to be this much a month. And she has to tell them, well, based on what you're buying, your interest rate, what you're putting down and the length of your loan, your payment cannot be that low. And they say, well, my car payment is $350 or $400 or $500. And she says, yes, because you have flexibility when it comes to your auto loan. So the way that auto loans are structured, you can extend them out and therefore have a shorter or a smaller monthly payment you're going to end up paying more in interest in the long run but we view everything in low installment payments that we're not actually conceptualizing how much we're spending how long we're going to be in debt how much we're going to spend on interest also i want to be clear this is not me villainizing people who take out car loans sometimes we do what we have to do um, and so if you have a car payment i'm not this is not me coming at you. Bottom line, it's none of our business what's going on in someone else's checking account. I do feel like in this world of hauls and shop with me and get ready with me where people are tagging 800 different products in their description, we, we do live in a time of overconsumption and that is concerning, but it, it simply is no one... It simply is no one's business how we spend our money. And it is really easy to look at people who maybe are in your same demographic or life phase and wonder how they did it and not know what the circumstances are behind it. Do they have family money? Are they deeply in debt? Do they simply make more money than you? And it's also really easy to judge people based on those things. But I want, I, I caution myself and I caution you to imagine people is to look at people complexly to realize that humans are humans and at the end of the day none of this really matters what a way to end this video what are some of your controversial money opinions i would love to know leave me a comment below and i'll talk to you soon